முடிய <laughs> 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 Uh, live is coming. Uh, live is starting, sir. Hmm. Uh, sorry, sir. Hmm. You can stop filming in the middle of the screen. Hmm. You can see the hidden screen in the middle of the screen. You can see the screen in the middle of the screen. That's it. Hmm. ஒன்னு யூடியூப்ல லைவ் ஆகல இத பாத்து வந்துட்டு இது வந்துட்டு இருக்கு அதுல லைவ் ஆக ஆரம்பிச்சதுக்கு அப்புறம் பேசினா தான் நல்லா இருக்கும் ம் ம் நோட் பண்ணுங்க ஆ ரூக் மாதர் எஸ் சார் ஒருங்க <laughs> What happened, Kamal? Ah, oh, it's coming, sir. It's coming. My screen is shared with YouTube. டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் Uh, webinar from the department of science and humanities in association with the mpec forum uh, we have conducted many 
in-situ program in the college campus uh, due to the COVID-19. It is a new platform, virtual platform to get engaged with the knowledge sharing throughout the globe. Uh, on behalf of the P.T. Lee Sengal Varai Naikar Trust and as well as P.T. Lee Sengal Varai Naikar College of Engineering and Technology, we welcome you all for the, the webinar on smart engineering materials and applications to be presented by Dr. M. Saravanan, Professor of Physics, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Ramavaram Campus, Chennai. Now, I would like to invite Dr. S. Pubadi, the principal of the college, to the webinar. Now, I, I would like to invite our college teaching, non-teaching faculty members into the and to present a brief introduction about the PTLE Single Varai Naikar, PTLE Single Varai Naikar Trust, and as well as PTLE Single Varai Naikar College of Engineering and Technology, which is established in Kanchipura. PTLE Single Varai Naikar, who actually lived in the 18th century and earned more and more money and wealth due to his business knowledge across the globe. And he donated his entire belongings to the public, especially to provide the professional education for all the poor and downtrodden students in the society. To fulfilling his aim, the P.T. Lee Sengal Varai Naikar College of Engineering and Technology is established in 2001-2002 academic year in the P Kanjiburam campus. The trust has been administrated by the appointment of nine trustees which includes uh, retired judge from the High Court of Madras and other nine public personalities from the society. Now it is run with the constitution of board established by the High Court of Madras. The present board is heading by Honorable through Justice S. Rajeswaran. The Honorable Trustees are Dr. M. Paramatma, through C. Parandaman, Thiru V. Sugendran, Dr. P. Sagar, Dr. G. Santanam IAS retired, Thiru uh, S. Tamilmani, Dr. A. Kalaiwani, and Dr. G. Viswanathan, former Vice Chancellor of Education University, Government of Tamil Nadu. Not only our engineering college, our trust has been established, the group of institution for the benefit of poor and downtrodden people in the society. Our college is established in 2001 in the Kanjiburam Uveri campus and started with Mechan Department of Mechanical Engineering in 2001 and then Department of Electronics and Communication in 2001. And we have started the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering in 2006 and the Department of Computer Science and Engineering in 2007. So due to overwhelming response from the public, the Department of Civil Engineering also established in the year 2012. And the Department of Science and Humanities, since from the 2011, it has been giving its extended support to provide basic science to uh, explore the, the technical and engineering knowledge to the professional students studying in our college. And we have all the facilities, including a central library with 30,000 uh, 30, volume of books, and students are employed through training and placement cell and we have provided and social related uh, uh, functions time to time. The importantly, it is common to all over India, the fees collected from the student is just 12,500 per semester for every branches. And also the college provide all the scheme of scholarship provided by the state government and as well as central government and the college also assisting to get bank loan from the nationalized banks for the 
deserved candidates with this i conclude my welcome note now i invite professor yan sri devi department of chemistry to give a introductory note on dr m saravanan welcome madam good morning to all it's a time to welcome our resource person and it's a great honor for me to welcome dr m saravanan currently working as a professor of physics at srm university ramapuram campus chennai on behalf of our organizers and the ptl sengolraya naikar college of engineering and technology i welcome once again sir sir has completed his msc physics at madras university chennai mphil physics at bharathidasan university tiruchi mtech applied electronics at prist university puducherry and awarded his phd in crystal growth at bharathiyar university coimbatore he is a dynamic resourceful teacher and researcher with genuine interest in students cognitive and social growth for 17 years his working research field of interest are crystallography crystal growth nano science and nano technology he has published nine research papers with high impact factor journals that is indexed in scopus science citation index and web of science during the period of his service he has attended many training and workshops then he is a reviewer in international journal of spectrochemical act a molecular biomolecular chinese journal of chemistry journal of crystal growth and springer journals he act as a co principal investigator of dst scrb funded project of rupees 25 lakhs 87000 for the title of unidirectional growth and characterization of high quality non linear optical aerosol derivative single crystal for second harmonic generations device applications he also a membership in professional bodies in indian science congress association and associate member of technologist in institution of engineers kolkata he has been organized series of eight national conferences on hierarchically structured material from 2013 to 2020 and he was cash awarded by srm institute in web of science and a science indexed journal for best researcher thank you sir thank you madam now the session is handed over to the resource person dr m saravanan professor of physics srm institute of science and technology ramavaram campus chennai please sir yes sir thank you dr suresh kumar sir and uh, uh, dr chidavi madam uh, for giving the great introduction about me um, i am sharing the screen right now Please, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, able to see the screen, sir. PPT. Yeah, uh, getting, sir. Ah, uh, okay, fine. Ah. Uh. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the management, uh, principal, and uh, the faculties, uh, especially teaching and non-teaching uh, our staff members from the PTL Chengalvan Maikar uh, Engineering College, Kanchipuram, for giving this opportunity. um i am dr m saravanan working as a professor in the department uh, of physics srm ish rampur campus since 2009 uh, today i am going to give the uh, the detailed uh, talk about uh, the smart engineering materials and uh, its applications uh, smart engineering materials are uh, a part of a group of materials broadly known as uh, functional materials the smart materials are uh, the materials that uh, responds to changes in their environment and then undergo a material property change these property changes can be leveraged to create an actuator or a sensor from the materials without any additional control or electronics required the modern engineers understand that the advantages and limitations of each material so that the appropriate solution can be suggested for customers applications there are different uh, uh, types of smart materials uh, such as metallic glasses shape embryo alloys magneto resistive hydrogels electroactive polymers magneto rheological and electro rheological materials now uh, i am going to give you a detailed talk on metallic glasses and the shape memory um, alloys because of these uh, materials application in the interdisciplinary fields the metallic glasses or the glass are uh, amorphous solids which exhibit the metallic properties 
generally the metallic glasses is nothing but the amorphous metal the metallic glasses uh, first uh, discovered uh, are reported in 1960 um, they are uh, solid alloys that, that are not crystalline uh, having an atomic arrangement inherited directly uh, from the liquid state in this uh, sense uh, the metallic glasses are the similar to the more uh, familiar oxide glasses such as the soda lime glasses uh, used for windows and bottles at first um, it was uh, considered only by ultra rapid quenching of the liquid um moreover um the metallic glasses um, um, uh, uh, the composition are known that can be uh, the cast fully gla uh, glass in bulk um that is uh, um with a minimum cross section of uh, 1 mm to the 1 cm range without the need of need for a high cooling rates the availability of uh, such bulk material uh, metallic glasses has opened up possibilities for uh, exploitation and they are currently among the the most intensively studied of all the materials uh, i mean uh, metallic materials um from the scientific or uh, the point of view the metallic glasses are fascinating because many of their important properties and behavior are only uh, now beginning to be understood the vast of the challenge in understanding then um, them comes about because it is much more difficult to characterize the structure especially on uh, the critically the defects in the structure of an amorphous material than it is for a uh, uh, crystalline material according to the unique properties the uh, uni i mean uh, the metal glasses have high strength highly ductile and uh, the greatly tough corrosion resistant low corrosivity and low hysteresis generally uh, if you cite any type of materials the, the applications that can be extracted from the properties and um, if you if you if you go to the deep uh, discussion about the the properties of the i mean unique properties of the metallic glasses um the strength of the metallic glass is very very high nearly uh, twice of the uh, stainless steel but they are very lighter in weight they are uh, ductile uh, malleable uh, brittle and opaque the hardness is very very high so, um compared with the other uh, the metallic compounds the hardness is very very high um especially for the metallic glasses the toughness is also very very uh, high which means the the fracture resistance uh, uh, is very high more than the ceramics they have the high elasticity uh, that is the yield strength is high uh, they have the uh, the high corrosion resistance they do not contain any crystalline defects like a point defects a dislocation stacking faults etc they are soft matic materials as a result easy mattification and demantization are possible Mattically soft metallic glasses have a very narrow hysteresis loop, and um, thus they have the very low hysteresis energy loss. They have the high electrical resistivity, uh, which uh, which leads to a uh, yeah, very low eddy, eddy current loss. Uh, according to the preparation of the metallic glasses, um, it is okay. I mean now, nowadays okay, it is prepared by the rapid quenching technique. And before that, okay, I give the I mean the description about the types of metallic glasses. There are two types of metallic glasses. uh generally metal metallic glasses this is example for the metal uh, metallic glasses example okay nickel niobium and uh, the the copper zirconium the metal metalloid glasses are also there it is another type uh the transition metals like the ferrous gopal nickel and the metalloids like uh, the, the the barium silicon or the carbon and the phosphorus are used according to the preparation uh, the technique the the, the 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 principle used in the making metallic glasses is uh, extremely rapid cooling also known as uh, uh, the quenching technique um uh, other than the i mean uh, other than the quenching technique we have the chemical vapor deposition method we have the physical vapor deposition method um and uh, the rapid quenching comes under the mel spinning method um in the chemical vapor uh, deposition method it is a chemical process um they are used to produce a high purity high performance and uh, the um, the solid materials the process is often used in the semiconductor industry to produce a thin films uh, in a typical cvd process the wafer especially the uh, the substrate is exposed to uh, one or more volatile fabric gases um the which react and are decomposed on the substrate the surfa surface to produce a desired deposit the frequently uh, the volatile by products are also produced which are removed by gas flow through a the reaction chamber and the next one is uh, the physical vapor deposition method in this method um there's a various variety of the vacuum deposition and is a general term used to describe any of a variety of the methods to deposit the thin films by the condensation of a vaporized form of the material onto various uh, surfaces um the coating method involves a purely a uh, physical process uh, such as uh, high temperature uh, coating method um 
and a vacuum evaporation or the plasma okay sputter which is bombarded rather than involving a chemical reaction at the surface to the coated as in the chemical vapor as, as in the chemical vapor deposition method uh the meta, uh, now okay i'm going to discuss about the metallic glasses uh, preparation metallic glasses by the uh, melt spinning method uh, in this melt, melt spinning method okay we use a principle that is called uh, i mean uh, the kunsing method the kunsing is nothing but the rapid cooling of the the metallic alloys so in the melt spinning is a technique used for the rapid cooling of liquids um i'll show the, the diagram over here so this is uh, the the figure okay i mean explicit the melt spinning unit here yeah the melt spinning uh, technique is used for rapid cooling uh, the, the techniques yeah, wheel is uh, uh, cooled internally uh, usually by uh, uh, water or uh, i mean a liquid nitrogen and the, and the rotator a thin stream of the liquid is then uh, dripped onto the wheel and uh, cooled um, you causing the rapid solidification then the technique is used to develop the metallic glasses uh, that are required extremely high cooling rates in order to form a uh, rapid kunsing method um, especially this type of method is used to extract heat from the melt by the contact with a chill block the high cooling uh, rate is required to form metallic glasses from the melt since um, the fast extraction um, of heat is necessary the dimensions of the uh, solid obtained is limited to your 50 micrometer the molten liquid uh, metal alloy is uh, pushed out of the fine nozzle by the gas by the gra gas pressure A layer of uh, rotating metallic disc is formed between the nozzle and the chill block. A metallic glass ribbon about one centimeter wide, uh, the thirty uh, the thirty micrometer thick, uh, can be uh, thus produced. Now I have the um, uh, simple video presentation which uh, representing the uh, I mean uh, rapid cooling method. Uh, here we have the fine nozzle, and um, here um, this nozzle uh, is. Uh, Uh, totally pressurized by the helium or uh, okay, I mean uh, neon, uh, or any type of uh, organic uh, the gas pressures. Uh, the video unable to play. Yes. Sir. Mm. Yeah. Hope that you all see this video here. metallic alloy okay when it is impinging on the moving substrate we have the water the the thickness the required thickness and the diameter of the metallic glasses this means okay the alloy is melted by induction heater under an inert helium or organic atmosphere the adjustment of the melt is achieved by increasing the gas pressure the dynamic the, uh, the melt puddle impinging on the moving substrate is solidified and thrown out of the wheel by the centrifugal force after the travel and uh, i come to the point applications of metallic glasses <coughs> the, the metallic glasses applications um, uh, especially in interdisciplinary field they are used as uh, reinforcing elements um, especially in the civil okay and the constructional okay engineering they are used to uh, construct the fly wheels and the metallic glasses are used to make the magnets which are used in levitated trains as a medium of the transport uh, uh, transportation as you know very well about the meissner effect which is uh, also called uh, the flux exclusion principle uh, it is a diamagnetic okay the behavior so when we apply the extra magnetic field to the diamagnetic material uh, since uh, I mean due to the the negative uh, the magnetic susceptibility uh, of the diamagnetic nature the incident of magnetic flux that will be totally expelled and that uh, totally okay expelled from the water the the, the diamagnetic material so based on this principle that all the super fast train and uh, the bullet train what okay, just we are often called as bullet train which is uh, working and that can be driven at the, the speed at the rate of a minimum 800 km per hour this train is uh, okay i mean also available now in the japan and new zealand and in almost all the western countries yeah and the other applications uh, uh, they used to make the razor blades and the different uh, the kinds of springs so nowadays okay we are using the okay springs okay that with which has been okay the used as the water metallic glasses and moreover the metallic glasses generally okay have the property of the metal as well as uh, the glasses the laser blades okay the sharp laser blade okay that can be i mean uh, that can be uh, been uh, manufactured by utilizing the uh, the metallic glasses due to the high corrosion resistance uh, these based on this property the metallic glasses are used to make this type of uh, i mean uh, the laser blades and different kinds of uh, springs <coughs> and especially in the electronics industry 
uh, they are used in the core of high power transformer. Uh, use of uh, the metallic uh, glasses in transformers is found to improve the efficiency of the power distribution transformer. And moreover, the metallic glasses uh, provides a very uh, low hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. Based on the property, the metallic glass is successfully employed um, in the production of the core of the, I mean, uh, uh, the transformer, uh, the core of the transformer. Um, so the flux leakage between the, the primary coil and the secondary coil that has been totally reduced by employing these type of metallic glasses, uh, since it provides a very low hysteresis and eddy current loss. And uh, these, uh, especially these type of transformers are used to, to convert high voltage current to the low voltage current to be used for the domestic applications, uh, which uh, come the, comes around 120 volt and uh, 240 volt range. Then um, uh, these, okay, I mean, metal glasses, okay, are used in the, the cryo thermometers and the matter, as well as the matter residue sensors. So due to nearly zero temperature coefficient of resistance, the metal glasses are widely used to uh, the production of the cryo uh, thermometers and the matter the matter rescue sensors. Generally, the matter rescue uh, the the sensors okay I mean uh, uh, widely okay used in the, all the MRI and uh, I mean uh, the computer okay, for, 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 for uh, scanning elements and uh, uh, it widely okay used in the tape record head tape recorder heads. The previously nowadays okay we are uh, I mean uh, I, I mean we are hearing the music or video from the mobile phone, but very previously. We had the, the tape recorder. The tape recorder, okay, that I read it, okay, heads that has been, uh, okay, made by, okay, employing the metallic glasses. And uh, there is a very important application. Um, the metallic glasses, since, okay, it is having the, okay, the high chemical, uh, to withstand the high chemical stability as well as to withstand the, okay, high nuclear radiation. The metallic glasses widely used to make the container for the nuclear waste, uh, okay, disposal. As a magnetic properties of the metallic glasses are not affected by the radiation, radiation, so they are used to making the containers for the nuclear waste, uh, waste disposal. And moreover, uh, uh, widely used for the, the magnets for the fusion reactors. Uh, here we have the magnetic coils. Okay, here we have the, the fusion chambers. Okay, so the metallic glasses. Okay, widely used. Okay, uh, especially in the water, the fusion reactors. So since it's always a very low eddy current and this is loss. And um, um, apart from that, uh, okay, the, the other industry applications, it is widely used in the marine cables um, and the chemical filters and the inner okay, surface of the reactor vessels. Uh, because okay, the, it is okay, the, I mean, a high, uh, more okay, tough and uh, high corrosive, I mean, it is having the high corrosion resistance. And moreover, okay, its mechanical strength is okay, compared with the, the steel, okay, it's uh, okay, more, or especially the twice. So, so due to this, okay, the property, the mechanical as well as the water, the the other, okay, I mean, uh, the, the pertinent, the physical, okay, the properties, this type of, okay, the metallic, okay, I mean, uh, metal metalloid, okay, the glasses widely are used to make the inner surface of the, okay, reactor vessels. And um, especially in the medical, okay, field, these type of materials are used to, okay, make the surgical instruments and implantation materials. Um, and moreover, uh, apart from these, the metal glasses, okay, nowadays used to make the implant materials. Implant materials. Um, implant materials means, okay, the material, okay, which is having the, okay, the more biocompatible, uh, that material can be, okay, used as implant material. Which means, okay, the replacing the what, uh, our, the damaged bone, a soft bone, or the what, I mean, uh, the, the soft bone or the hard bone, or whatever it is. And uh, most of the surgical tools, okay, that has been made by the, okay, I mean, in the metallic glasses, because due to the what high corrosive resistance, because especially surgical, okay, instruments, uh, mostly the surgical in instruments that will be contacted with the what our blood and uh, okay other, uh, okay, I mean uh, tissues, uh, which is okay already, I mean, uh, which is already embedded in the water, water molecules, because in our human body, okay, we have the seventy percent, seventy to eighty percent of water molecules. Okay, so the, due to the high corrosion resistance, okay, if you use uh, the surgical instruments made by the metallic glasses, it will not corrode easily. Okay, that's why, okay, these meta metallic glasses why they used to make the surgical instruments and implantation materials. Actually, the implant materials, we have the three different types. One is a bio inert, bioactive, and bioresorbable. Uh, the bio inert and the bioactive, most probably, okay, that can be uh, made by the, any type of uh, metal or polymer ceramic materials, especially the metal. The metallic glasses, okay, nowadays they are employed. The third one, bioresorbable, is uh, somewhat okay, different. Um, that uh, the bioresorbable material, okay, that can, uh, I mean, uh, that can uh, replace the entire, okay, the bone 
after okay i mean implanting okay that uh, material okay that will be disappear but the function will exist um for a very good example uh, we have the i mean stent the drug valuter stent which we are i mean uh, using uh, for the i mean angio i mean angiogram um by the interventional cardiologist and the next one is a shape hemorrhage alloy it is another interesting uh, i mean uh, engineering materials smart engineering materials um uh, the shape hemorrhage alloy is okay are the metals uh, which have the ability to uh, return to some previous defined shape or size when subject uh, to, to the appropriate thermal procedures and uh, moreover uh, the shape hemorrhage alloy is an alloy that can be uh, deformed when the cold battery returns to its pre deformed shape when heated um it may or it, it may it may also be uh, called memory metal uh, memory alloy the smart metal and uh, the smart okay alloy or uh, muzzle wire very good examples of the nitinol nickel titanium uh, the composition that provides a what nitinol component in nowadays okay nitinol come the nickel titanium component widely i uh, used to make the ornamentals in the interdisciplinary applications and if we have the different types of uh, materials like metal ceramics polymers composite and uh, semiconductors uh, these are the the conventional materials however the composite is uh, okay the semiconductor is also okay, is, is evergreen the composite nowadays okay we have the nano composite materials uh, why which which plays vital role in the in the interdisciplinary field however the metal ceramics and the polymers okay already available but uh, the advanced research is going in the world uh, these are materials um compared with these okay i mean uh, i have the, i mean uh, the assorted materials the piezoelectric materials uh, shape hemorrhage alloys magnetic uh, shape hemorrhage alloys the magneto rheological okay the materials the ph uh, sensitive polymers the halobromic materials the thermochromic materials the chromogenic systems and electrochemic uh, okay I mean, materials smart uh, the grease so compared with along with these materials shape hemorrhage alloys i mean uh, is something okay different which comes under the the smart engineering materials because of its uh, the wide application not only in the industry it is also for the medicinal field so here okay this picture okay this figure okay shows that uh, the assorted application uh, of the shape hemorrhage alloy uh, which were successfully utilizing and um, a uh, very good example is a nickel titanium the nickel uh, the titanium is uh, also known as a nitinol um, uh, it is a metal alloy of a nickel and a titanium uh, where the two elements okay are uh, the, the present in uh, roughly equal atomic percentages for example the the, the nickel okay, alloy exhibits two closely related and unique properties the shape hemorrhage effect and uh, super elasticity also called uh, i mean uh, so super elasticity the shape memory is the ability of uh, the nitinol uh, to undergo deformation at one temperature uh, say it needs a deformed shape when the external force is removed the, uh, then the recover okay, is original undeformed shape upon heating above its transformation temperature so the super elasticity is the ability for the metal to undergo the large deformations um, and immediately return to its under i mean uh, un undeformed shape upon removal of uh, the external load the nitinol can uh, deform uh, 10 to 13 times as much as ordinary metals and return to its original shape whether uh, nitinol behaves with the uh, shape hemorrhage alloy effect or uh, super uh, elasticity depends on the whether it is above the transformation temperature of the specific alloy so below the transformation temperature it exhibits a shape hemorrhage okay effect and above the temperature is behaves a uh, super elasticity so according to the shape memory okay the alloy is um, it is uh, undergoes a solid to okay i mean a solid to uh, solid uh, phase transmission which can uh, exhibit the large recoverable strengths example the nitinol the nickel titanium alloy okay here okay he, here we have the material when the material is uh, strained or uh, it is a uh, deformed okay we have the structure like this after we applying the heating what will happen the material again regain its original okay size and shape okay heating or cooling okay that's why okay, it is called a shape memory effect okay whatever stress okay we applied the material okay gets strained the strain that can be recovered okay the deformation that has been okay the deformation on the material that has been released by either upon cooling or heating so this type of effect is called as a shape memory effect and now i have the very excellent video the demonstration of the shape memory metals um yeah here i have the uh, the gem clip type of pen okay where we apply uh, the 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 stress so what will happen then in the, in the assorted okay i mean i stretch the wire okay this material is made by the, the i mean uh, the shape memory okay material when we apply the heating 
automatically okay the material again retain its original uh, size and shape so this is a very good example of the shape memory effect okay so that's what i'm telling it's a ability of the material to recover large okay deformations uh, during the mechanical loading and uh, unloading cycles at a constant temperature is refers to the pseudo elasticity or super elasticity yeah we have the different two uh, stable okay i mean we have the two different types of uh, sma uh, the mechanism uh, smas have the two stable phases so one is uh, the high temperature phase which is uh, often called as austenite phase this is a austenite phase austenite uh, okay, phase um, all basic slice in the cubic uh, okay, okay, structure and the next one is a low temperature phase so called is a martensite okay this phase the martensite there are the, okay i mean the martensite can be uh, exist in the any one of the two forms so one is a twinned other means other one is a deep twinned the 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 twinned and the deep twinned okay both are uh, uh, i mean uh, both are okay i mean uh, two different okay form of the martensite um the phase transformation okay which occurs between these two phases upon heating or cooling that is uh, the basis for the unique properties of the sme so generally the deep finite okay i mean deep finite okay the martin site that is uh, um, exhibits in the monoclinic crystal structure yeah i have the okay the two wonderful video about uh, which i mean uh, which exhibits uh, the one way uh, i mean shape memory effect and the two way shape memory effect according to the one way shape memory okay effect the material that exhibits shape memory are only upon heating um i played this video this video i uh, just uh, i have the 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 pin okay which has been uh, made by the shape memory alloy when we apply the stress the pin is totally okay bended when we apply the heat again the pin retain is original okay size uh, shape this is called one way shape memory effect which means um, the material uh, the deformation of the material that can be okay recovered by only upon the heating this is called one way shape memory alloy and according to the two way shape memory alloy the retinal okay the experiments okay is a very uh, um, important and uh, that will explain how the material that can be uh, retained its original size and shape upon heating or cooling so this is a cold water yeah so when we the deformation that can be released by okay employing uh, by reducing the temperature when we take the okay different types of the okay the the strings okay water we have we just put in the cold water the strain okay the, the deformation that has been removed and uh, so this is a this is a nickel this is nickel wire which has been uh, which has been made by the shape memory uh, i mean uh, alloys when we apply the the stress or are uh, are are uh, when we apply the uh, i mean uh, thermal uh, heat the material okay again okay i mean uh, come back to its original position so the material that can be uh, retained its original size and shape upon either heating or cooling this type of effect is called the two way shape memory effect how the material that can uh, uh, okay retain its original size and shape so this is uh, uh, when we twisted in the different uh, okay i mean assorted uh, parameter when we apply the okay the pressure and just put it in the cold water all the wires okay that can be stretched properly so when we apply the heat what will happen the deformation totally removed due to the pseudo elastic behavior and thank you for watching this uh, video yes uh, yeah the shape memory okay effect uh, that's uh, just now okay i told about the shape memory effect the mystery metric crystalline uh, crystallinity during the shape memory effect here we have the okay austenite shape the austenite shape okay when the load okay that has been what i mean uh, when we apply the load okay the austenite shape okay that has been given to martin site and uh, uh, furthermore i mean uh, when we apply the cooling okay we have the twin martin site when we apply the load okay, what will happen we have the deform martin site and upon heating again okay we can retain the i mean uh, the material retain the original okay I mean, size and shape that is called austenite 
So this is a okay, heating effect and this is a cooling effect. So when we are heating, what will happen? The material, the steam okay, that has been water stretched. Upon cooling, what will happen? The the the, the deformed okay, the, the force okay on the material that has been water water released. So this is called uh, the two-way shape memory effect. So the ability of the material to erase relatively large mechanically induced strains by appropriate thermal cycle is referred to the uh, safe memory effect. During the mechanical loading, the twenty-two Martin site that becomes uh, I mean uh, the Martin site. Uh, during the heating, um, the, the deformed Martin site becomes austenite, and upon cooling, transfer to the twenty-two Martin site. Uh, applications are very very important because of these applications. Okay, nowadays we widely use the shape memory. Okay, the materials uh, with the interdisciplinary applications, especially in the the biological applications. Um, in a bone plates. Um, uh, under reinforcement of uh, arteries and veins, the plates are set at uh, the temperature below the temperature. Um, when the body gets uh, the heat, air, the plates contract, uh, inducing the sustained pressure, making the okay. I mean, uh, recovery fast. So the clogged arteries and veins uh, can be okay strengthened. The SMA okay or crushed under uh, the plates inside these okay arteries and veins when they okay reach the body temperature and they expanding and they expand opening the arteries and veins. So the according to the okay SMA okay the I mean uh, pseudoelastic behavior the sapimeter alloy okay widely used as uh, or the making their stents nowadays okay uh, the, the uh, I mean uh, the person uh, I mean uh, the, I mean the person okay I mean attacked by the the massive I mean uh, cardiac okay problem um, the intervention cardiac is to initially take the angiogram okay the after angiogram and angiogram is a one type of diagnostic method okay to identify the number of blocks okay present uh, in the the, the heart disease and veins in the human heart and more of the percentage also so if the more than two number of okay more than three are uh, four number of blocks intervention cardiologist will suggest to go for the i mean open surgery but uh, the two blocks or uh, three blocks with the uh, 70 percentage or 80 percentage okay the rate so they will suggest uh, i mean uh, angioplasty the angioplasty they use a balloon catheter okay when we that they insert the balloon catheter okay in the particular okay the arteries where the the block the 70 or 80 percent of blocks okay the augmented due to the lipids so when they i mean when they flee the ward the balloon catheter the balloon okay that will open the block after okay they will uh, after the block is open they will introduce the ward the strength that the uh, strength is called drug diluted strength this strength is made by the shape memory alloys uh, due to the pseudo elastic behavior, this type, this type of okay stent okay that will avoid the agglomeration of the I mean uh, the lipid the agglomeration of the water lipids um, which leads to cause for the water I mean uh, the blocks in the artery veins. So um, and, uh, and moreover the SMA okay the especially in the SMA okay stents the nitinol is used in a medicine for the stents. Uh, a collapsed okay stent can be inserted into a vein and heater returning it to its original exp expanded shape. The helping okay to improve the blood flow, also a replacement for uh, the the sutures where internal wire uh, can be weaved through two structures, uh, then allowed to transform uh, into its preformed shape, which would hold the vein uh, structures in place. And uh, next one is the optometry. Okay, in the optometry, the eyeglass frames. Uh, made from the titanium, the containing the shape mirror alloys are, are marketed under the trademarks of Flexon and the titan, uh, titan Flex. And these type of frames, uh, these type of frames are usually uh, made out of the shape mirror alloys that have their the transition temperature set below the expected room temperature. Um, this allows the frames to undergo the large deformation under stress, uh, yet okay, regain their intended shape once the metal is unloaded again. And the orthodontic wires. This picture so, I mean, shows about orthodontic the wires, and um, it is used for uh, the dental braces because of its ability um, to accommodate a large percentage spine, but also because it has a good biocompatibility and is inherent desired to return to its initial shape. And due to the pseudo elastic behavior of the nickel titanium wires, means that on loading, that uh, they return to, uh, to their original shape by delivering the uh, light continuous forces over a wide range of the deformation, which is uh, climbed to allow the dental uh, displacements. And this is a flexible nitinol, okay, the wires. Uh, this flexible nitinol wires are widely used in the, the robotics, okay. Um, the world robotics arms, okay, that has been okay. I mean, uh, the, the that has been okay made by the flexible nitinol wires due to its pseudo elastic behavior. The wires have the ability to 
the I mean flex the robotic muscles according to the electric pulses sent through the wire. So retinol is generally doped with other materials like chromium or copper or aluminium or ferrous. And moreover, the, the flexinol is a popular brand of SMU wire. The, this flexinol okay, is designed to take more repeated stress cycles than pure uh, nitinol or okay, nickel titanium mixes. And uh, other SMU applications, air, aircraft uh, maneuverability. Uh, the, nit the nitinol okay, wires can be used in applications, applications such as uh, the actuators uh, for planes. The many use uh, bulky hydraulic systems, um, the, which are expensive and, uh, and need, uh, need a lot of okay, maintenance. Okay? So these pictures okay, uh, that uh, okay, execute okay, the nitinol wires, how they I mean, uh, used in the applications such as actuators for the planes and uh, the aircraft, okay, the pictures. And uh, other applications of the, I mean, uh, the SME applications, um, the small okay, incision uh, teasers, anti-scaling devices, the fire sprinkles, the prevent structural damage uh, to uh, bridge okay, the buildings and uh, uh, robots. And uh, apart from that, nowadays the uh, shaping alloys, the reason the recent developer shaping alloys are widely uh, used to make the, I mean, uh, the artificial lungs, the artificial kidneys, okay, especially in the, okay, I mean, the medicinal applications. And we have the, the several advantages and the disadvantages of the shaping body, okay, I mean, all right. Um, it's, it, is a, it, is a, it is having the accelerated biocompatibility. According to the biocompatibility, while we uh, use the shaping body, okay, based the implant materials, uh, the material, okay, will not uh, initiate any other allergic response or it will not induce, okay, any other, okay, the, the cancer cells. So that's why, okay, the shape material alloys, okay, I mean, provides, I mean, since it provides a water, I mean, very great biocompatibility, the material is used to make the, I mean, uh, the bioimplant materials, especially the onto and uh, even though that's what I, I told that, okay, drug diluted stent, uh, which is, I mean, which is widely used by the interventional cardiologist in the angioplasty and the artificial lungs and the artificial, uh, okay, I mean, uh, kidneys, okay, these, okay, I mean, uh, artificial, okay, I mean, uh, the organs that has been okay, the I mean uh, that has been made by the water shaping very alloy material because it is a biocompatibility. Uh, I mean, uh, if you if you use it, okay, I mean some other okay, the polymer or the ceramic based materials, definitely okay, it is uh, it seems due to the lacking of the biocompatibility. Okay, the the around the implantation in our human body, the tissues, okay, even though okay, uh, the the um, uh, our, our human repeats, okay, that will be collapsed. Okay, due to the making of the chemical composition of the material, but however, okay, compared with the okay other polymer, ceramic, and uh, the metallic implant materials, the secondary, okay, it is a group of metallic alloys. So, um, since okay, I mean, due to these what the uh, due to these uh, the physical and the chemical the properties, this material provides okay the greater biocompatibility with other material compared with other materials, and the diverse field of applications. And the good mechanical good mechanical properties, stronger and the corrosion resistance. So due to due to this property, this I mean uh, that's what I'm telling. Okay, this material okay uh, used to okay the make the water drug diluted stent. Okay, especially in the drug diluted stent, it is a drug coated stent. Okay, employing um, after the angioplasty. Okay, and after the angioplasty procedure. Okay, uh, this will okay. I mean, uh, I, I mean, uh, this will okay allow the. I mean, this will okay. I mean, maintain the the flow of blood in the particular arteries. The simplicity and next one, simplicity, compactness, and the safety mechanisms. The high power and the uh, okay weight ratios. And it is this material has the several okay disadvantages. One is expensive, very very expensive. Just now I told about the one type of the bio. I mean, uh, bio. I mean, uh, implant material that is a bio reserve material. Uh, for example, um, the drug diluted stent, okay, which you are using for the angioplasty, it is available at the cost of thirty two thousand rupees. Uh, since it is a bio unit, but uh, the same okay stent, okay, especially used for the angioplasty, it is okay. It is comes under the bio reservable. The simple stent comes at the cost around the minimum one point five to okay three lakhs, because um, the bio reserve material slowly disappears, but the functions will what exist, okay, and uh, the poor fatic properties. The other important the disadvantages and over stress, the limited bandwidth due to the heating or uh, the cooling restrictions. So due to the okay cyclic uh, number of okay the, the 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 heating and the cooling is cyclic. Okay, the material property okay I mean uh, slowly okay but uh, that will be slowly okay degraded. Uh, thank you okay I mean uh, for this opportunity. Um, I'm ready to clarify 
I'm ready to interact with the, the participants that I have any doubts. Pressure. Professor, thank you for the insightful lecture to the participant and uh, the refreshing the knowledge to the faculty members, uh, mostly from science and technology and uh, engineering. Uh, I think uh, in the chat box, uh, everyone has appreciated your present uh, presentation. And uh, in my personal chat box, uh, most uh, uh, requests are uh, to replay the three beautiful videos explaining the yeah, metallic course, yes, two will be safe memory allies. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. I replay once again, please. Yes. Are you able to see the PPT, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, um, so this is uh, the first video about the preparation of the metallic glass. Yes, so it is a metallic alloy uh, which under the pressure on the helium or argon or atmosphere. The adjustment of the melt is achieved by increasing the gas pressure. So the dynamic pedal which we are uh, seeing over here Imping on the moving substrate is solidified and thrown out of the wheel by the centrifugal force after traveling the short distance. So this is the first video. And uh, the another okay video I have uh, for the shaping material alloys. Yeah, this is demonstration about uh, the shaping memory metal. Uh, okay, this is a uh, the metal after we uh, stretch the okay the clay the single wire when we apply the heat uh, the clay okay again uh, I mean uh, the wire again uh, okay I mean detain is original uh, the size and the uh, okay, shape. So this is called uh, the Shephemery, uh, this is called the pseudo elasticity or the uh, super elastic uh, the principle. And uh, another two videos is uh, one is uh, the I mean, uh, one way Shephemery type I mean, effect and uh, two way Shephemery okay, effect. One way Shephemery effect means uh, uh, only upon heating the material uh, I mean, uh, retains its original uh, the shape. The uh, other one is a nitinol uh, based wire. So not only upon heating, when it is what I mean, uh, the cooling of the I mean uh, the deformed material, it again okay. I mean, retain its uh, original size and shape. That is a very interesting thing about the nitinol I have to share right now. The nitinol, okay, I mean uh, it's a it's a type of metallic alloy. Nickel and titanium, where the I mean uh, two elements are present in roughly equal atomic percentages.
yeah when we make a triangle after we apply the okay the thermal procedure okay it again begin is original size and shape this is a nitinol wire yeah so it will regain uh, okay its uh, the size and shape after either upon cooling or heating this is a two way shape memory effect and uh, this uh, another important uh, thing i want to share about the nickel titanium uh, okay extremes actually the nickel okay the titanium okay it is a nickel uh, is a okay one type of metallic alloy already told uh, it is a composition of nickel and titanium um where the two elements are present in roughly equal atomic percentages the different uh, the alloys are named according to the weight percentage of a nickel for example okay we have the two different uh, type of the nitinol one is a nitinol 55 and next one is a nitinol 60 the both are okay exhibit a shape memory okay the, uh, effect and the super i mean elasticity at a uh, different temperatures and um, um it has a okay very excellent at uh, the physiochemical uh, the property and moreover uh, um the nitinol alloy exhibits two closely related and unique properties uh, shape memory effect and uh, super elasticity um uh, already okay we have discussed about the okay the shape memory okay the effect um uh, generally um, according to the okay, history of the i mean about the nitinol okay um, it is uh, okay derived the, the composition and is placed okay the place of uh, discovery um actually it has been uh, discovered in the a um, novel uh, okay i mean ordnance laboratory okay by the william okay the buckler along with uh, the frederick fang okay both have okay discovered the okay nitinol and um, uh, the potential okay application for the nitinol okay it's uh, especially in the multidisciplinary field um, that were okay realized okay immediately the practical efforts to commercialize the alloy okay that did not take place until they are the decade later so this delay there was largely because of the extraordinary difficulty of melting processing and the machinering the alloy even uh, okay the efforts okay encountered the financial okay challenges okay so this has been okay faced by the okay buckler and um, generally okay the nitinol okay the unusual okay the properties are derived from the reversible uh, the solid state to phase transformation known as a martensite transformation so between the the two different uh, the martensite crystal phases now requiring minimum okay 10000 to okay 20000 the psi Uh, which means a 68 69 to around 140 okay mega pascal of mechanical stress and moreover uh, the, at, at the high temperatures the nitinol okay assumes okay that as an uh, interpenetrating simple cubic structures refers to the austenite that's already okay told also i mean austenite and uh, the martensite at low temperature phase the nitinol spontaneously, uh, spontaneously uh, transforms to a more okay, complicated monoclinic crystal structure that is okay known as a martensite okay so there are uh, actually there are uh, four transition temperatures the associated to the austenite to martin martensite and the martensite to austenite transformations uh, starting from the okay the full austenite the martensite begins to form as a okay alloy uh, that is cool to the so called uh, the martensite okay i mean uh, phase transition Ma martensite okay i mean uh, state of the transitions and um, uh, even though uh, that is another interesting thing about the nitinol um actually yeah, 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 a great deal okay the pressure can be produced by preventing the reversion of the deformed martensite or or calcite from the 35000 okay psi to in many cases more than 100000 psi which means the 689 okay the mega pascal okay so one of these okay the reasons uh, that nitinol works so hard to return to its original okay shape and is that is not uh, just as an ordinary okay the metal alloy um it is a i mean uh, it is a composition um of the i mean nitina i mean uh, nickel and what the titanium um and moreover uh, the another interesting uh, the, uh, the another interesting uh, scenario uh, is a uh, cooling the austenite to form the martensite deforming the uh, martensite then heating to revert to austenite thus returning to original the undeformed shape so this is called the thermal okay shape memory effect which is uh, uh, exhibited in the nitinol or okay, titanium wire so we uh, we have the number of the, we have the okay, enormous okay discussion about the nickel titanium alloy especially nitinol i mean in the which comes under the shape memory effect and we have the assorted application also i have given the few applications there are many applications of the, the nickel okay i mean uh, titanium uh, due to I mean because of its okay shape memory okay the effect 
um uh, moreover okay um, there are uh, okay the i mean the, the the four commonly okay the applications for nicknol what are the common types and um, the uh, one is a free recovery and next one is a what a constant recovery and third one is a work protection and a super elasticity so this is a, okay four okay commonly used types of application okay especially for anything else and uh, in in the, in the free recovery the retinol is deformed at a low temperature and heated to recover its original shape through the shape memory effect and in, in the constant recovery okay what we are uh, having um, uh, um as for a free recovery okay except that recovery is okay rigidly prevented and there's a uh, stress is generated and the third is a work protection in the work protection uh, here the okay the alloy is allowed to recover but uh, to do so it must uh, act uh, against a force uh, and, and and next one super elasticity which have already discussed okay i mean uh, deeply the retinal acts as a super cool spring okay through the super elastic effect so the super elastic materials undergo the stress induced transformations and are commonly recognized for the okay, shape memory property okay due to use of uh, the super elasticity nickel, nickel titanium wires exhibit the, the elasto okay caloric effect uh, which is okay stress uh, triggered heating cooling so in nickel titanium and nickel okay the titanium okay wires are currently okay, under research as the most promising material uh, for the technology uh, this process begins with the tensile loading on the wires uh, which causes a fluid uh, which means within the wire to flow uh, to the hot heat exchanger okay so simultaneously uh, the heat will be okay expelled the which can be used okay to heat the surrounding in the reverse process the tensile unloading of the wire leads to flowing to the the cold heat exchanger um and it is having the thermal and electrical okay why do you use in the thermal and electrical actuators also okay we have number of okay the i mean uh, uh, interdisciplinary interdisciplinary applications about uh, the nickel titanium nickel titanium wires uh, which come uh, which possess excellent pseudo elastic behavior any other the question sir uh, professor can you outline uh, some of the material uh... Uh, coming into the category of uh, smart engineering material other than metallic glasses and as well as uh, shape memory alloys ah yes sir actually uh, we have uh, um, yeah actually uh, very first okay i have uh, uh, shown uh, Yeah. So other than the, I mean, uh, the smart engine, I mean, other than the shape memory alloys and the metallic glasses, uh, we have the one extreme material, the composite and the semiconductors. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, the, I told that uh, composite nowadays, okay, the nano composites, okay, that has been, uh, okay, I mean, that has been manufactured by the dialect cone, okay, method. Uh, nano composite, okay, widely used in the textile industry. Uh, not only in the, in the textile industry, but all the interdisciplinary applications, the nano composite materials, okay, are using. um and the other one is uh, the semiconductor material the semiconductor is a uh, okay already known material nowadays okay the semiconductor uh, material uh, even okay the, it is uh, okay i mean uh, employed in the nano electronics principle and now we are using the display devices uh, like oled tv organic light emitting okay the diodes okay and uh, nims okay nano electromechanical okay the systems okay which provides uh, okay the excellent uh, okay i mean applications of the okay nano technology in the in the semiconductor field okay so we have the number of okay i mean uh, and even the polymers polymers okay um, other than the okay the shape memory alloy uh, we have the okay the i mean uh, the polymers okay widely used in the bio and in, uh, in the medical applications especially in the ophthalmology actually um uh that instead of the eye glass frames okay the people are using the contact lenses now so due to the okay excellent optical transparency we have with the polymer the I mean and the polymers okay widely used to make the, the contact lenses and we have the, the ceramics now in the ceramics okay we have the advanced ceramics okay widely okay used to make the heat line furnaces even though the two wheelers and the four wheelers okay the spot plug now that is made by the ceramic material we have the advanced ceramics that's what it is uh, uh, made by the silica carbide okay and blended with the okay the the, the lubricants according to the the metals okay we have the, the under the metal category okay we have the shape mineral alloy metal metal alloy categories 
Okay, we have the shaping alloys as well as uh, I mean uh, the metallic glasses. And the above, moreover, okay, the shape and very okay, the alloy, we have the number of materials like piezoelectric materials. As you know very well, the people uh, who is uh, okay, I mean, uh, the taking the engineering physics in the engineering colleges, they very well about the piezoelectric materials. The piezoelectric crystals, okay, widely okay, used to okay, they produce all the high frequency ultrasonic sound wave, I mean, uh, uh, sound waves in the piezoelectric oscillators. And even though that uh, all the okay, I mean uh, all the I mean even the sound level meter also the piezoelectric materials uh, I mean uh, widely used to convert the the uh, the pressure of the sound to the what electrical signals. Um, the, my, the, the the our hand hands free okay headphones that also, uh, that all these okay I mean, the hands free materials okay I mean uh, used in the inverse piezoelectric material. And we have the matrix shape memory, okay, alloys material, which is, uh, I mean, mostly, okay, used in the the in the, uh, in the, in the MRI and uh, the CT scan. Actually, uh, one of the uh, principal, uh, we also discussed the superconducting quantum using difference device, which is we uh, can used in the, I mean, uh, the MRI scan, uh, which uh, measures the temper minus 14 Tesla range of the matrix field uh, from the, okay, I mean, uh, from the brain. So even okay, um, if the, the CT scan, even though what the MRI scan, even though EEC also, but the matrix shape and the alloys materials okay widely used, and we have the pH sensitive polymers, the thermochromic materials, another very important materials. So with respect to the heat, okay, the material, the the property, especially the color changing property that has been changed. Homogenic systems, electrochromic systems, with application of the what at field, okay, the material, okay, the color, okay, that has been changed. So we have the number of okay the materials other than the okay shape memory alloy and uh, the metallic glasses. Uh, sir, professor, uh, thank you for the nice.